Well, hi everyone. I'm John Rithlin with my review of AEW Dynamite, and I enjoyed this week better than last week. Now, that doesn't mean last week was all bad, but I didn't like the street fight. Other people did. I got some shit for it, and oh well. I, I'm not apologizing for it because I'm standing by my opinions, as I always do. As you guys should stand by your opinions as well, and thank you very much for tuning in. So, Lance Archer attacks Sean Dean. Beats the shit out of him. Jake Roberts come out and cut the promo. Sounds like he, be, he could be Linda Blair's stunt double in The Exorcist, and says... They're supposed to apologize, but he'll apologize to Brandy when she kisses his ass and then mentions a whole bunch of stuff about women needing to remain in the kitchen and, you know, only being good for housework. I don't know what kind of guy would say something like this on camera and joke about that stuff. What can, I mean, come on, guys. Have I ever said anything like that, guys? Guys, come on. You you can tell me. You can be honest about it. I can just hear everybody shaking their heads. I can hear. I can feel everybody shaking their heads here. But I kid. I kid. You know what? It's fun to joke about everything. Jake Roberts just being typical heel here. And then mentioning Cody, hyping up the match with Lance Archer. And then suddenly they cut to Cody in a custom-made F-150 truck with that uh, Cody tattoo on the hood. And then he safely runs into some stuff that he could have easily walked around, has his fist taped up. Does some uh, brutal fisting action with Archer, even chokes him out with his ponytail at one point, you know, because choking him out with some of the tentacles from his murder hawk. And they beat each other up, and at one point, JR says, Cody wants him some snake, some plumber snake, because he's the son of the son of a plumber. And besides the whole lingering on the truck and then, you know, having him run into that stuff safely, if they just cut to Cody doing that. You know, just like suddenly a truck runs in. Oh, what the hell is this doing? They're trying to get in the arena. Oh my God, it's Cody. We see that. They could have just done that, but they didn't. They didn't do that. However, I'm excited to see what Cody and Archer do. So I'm going to blitz through some of this stuff. Tag team video package. I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. I liked the tag team division outside of the GIMP order. Jurassic Express with, unfortunately, Marco Stunt versus Best Friends with, unfortunately, Orange Cassidy. I'm going to surprise you guys, though, because I actually enjoyed this match for a few reasons. Uh, apparently the Dark Order may drop in the rankings because they haven't been able to compete due to the ongoing stuff that's been happening. Now, I hope everybody keeps their jobs, but you know what? I hate the Gimp Order, so I really don't care if they drop in the rankings because them being tag team champions would be fucking death because that gimmick is death. Uh, shockingly, the match is fine. I don't really think Chuck Taylor is that good, but him and Trent work well together. Trent's an incredible athlete. Luke Source and Jungle Boy are a dynamite team. And at one point, uh... <laughs> One point, it's like there's this tope and it got interrupted, and uh, Excalibur said tope interrupt us, and Sh Shivani sounded like he was gonna crack. And then Phoenix just blindsiding Orange Cassidy, kicking him in the head. The best use of Orange Cassidy, by the way, is getting repeatedly beat up because that is the only use for that horrible gimmick, in my personal opinion, of course. And then uh, MJF attacks Jungle Boy while the referee is distracted, and then uh, Chuck Taylor pins Jungle Boy soon after one, two, three, and then Wardlow. Throws Marco Stunt into the guardrail. He should be thrown over the guardrail and stay on that side of the guardrail because he should be a fan. He should not be in the ring. It's embarrassing to watch Marco Stunt in the ring. So hopefully next week we get to see something good happen. So then we get Moxley showing up and blowing off Alex Marvez, which to be fair, I think almost everybody did, including the company. Uh, they just put him in backstage stuff and then shoves the camera. So cool. We're going to see him a little later. Penelope Ford versus Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander versus Hikaru Shida. Four-way women's match. And you know what? This was goddamn good. This was really goddamn good. All these women are talented. They've improved in the ring dramatically in AEW alone. And they're and they're also fucking beautiful. They are. I mean, I'm sorry. They are. They, they, they all are. Um, and really, I mean, just for... It should be a crime to be as hot as Penelope Ford is, in my personal opinion. She, her and Kip are a great duo. She has improved in the ring just in the last couple of years that she's been competing. And I love Sheeta. She is my favorite out of this one. And uh, at one point somebody said the alien is down on the mat, which is just kind of funny, something I never thought I'd hear in wrestling. And it starts hot and stays constant. Yes, there were a few miscommunications and stuff like that, but you know what? This is, There was a Tower of Doom spot, a Destroyer from Brit. Um, a bad Poison Rana from Ford. Not that Ford can't hit a Poison Rana, but she hit on Statlander, who's a lot taller. I didn't care for that. The landing didn't look good, but you know what? I'm willing to overlook that. I just had to point out, though, for, uh, you know, to be consistent. And then um, <clears throat> Britt ends up, uh, there ends up being this kiss spot, actually, between uh, Kip and Ford, which it's, you know, Kip kiss hooray. I mean, I don't know. 
what happens is Britt and Statlander are outside. There's a lockjaw. She's got the glove on because, you know, safety and all that. And Sheeta hits a knee strike on Ford 1, 2, 3. Ford's got some nice wins. This will help her. And Sheeta facing Nyla Rose was the right call. And then it's Pineapple Pete, a vignette where Shug D's like, I don't know why Jericho did what he did, but you know what? I'm going to be okay with this, and I'm going to make sure that I show him how to have fun, this kind of stuff, or and embrace this. It, it was a bit weird, but it was what it was. And we're getting Nyla Rose versus Akara Shida no DQ match at Double or Nothing. Now, if Nyla Rose was the first ever AEW Women's Champion like she should have been, this would have been the time to take the title off of her because it would have been about seven months and it would have been a good idea. But she's only had it for just under three. Sheeta will event Sheeta should be the one to eventually take it off of her, but not till November, in my opinion. So have Sheeta, um, have Sheeta lose here, have Nyla continue, give her some good feuds, build the women's division back up. They're doing some good stuff. It's not perfect, but they're doing some good stuff. We then get uh Proud and Powerful, the former Proud and Powerful, Ortiz and Santana versus Omega and Matt Hardy. And like this because it went too long. Now, that's not to say it was all bad, but Matt shows up after Omega got the shit beat out of him for a little bit, and he's biting one of the members of uh, Santana and Ortiz. I forget which one. JR mentioned Tanahashi at one point. Cool, okay, maybe a possible New Japan um, alliance at some point when everything gets back to normal. There was a bad twist of fate for two. Fucking hell, Santana landed like, good lord, how does he still have a neck? And there's a butterfly trap spot at one point. I'm skipping through a lot of this because a lot of this match is just filler. Matt really cannot work long matches anymore. He really can't. He's stumbling a lot because he's beat his body up since the 90s. I mean, that's going to happen. No matter how good a shape he can feel that he's in, it's obvious he doesn't have much left. He seems to be having, be having fun, and that's great. But he does a butterfly trap or it looks like he's going to tap out Ortiz. Nope, he doesn't. Here's Sammy in a neck brace because he got run over by the uh, golf cart, took that hell of a bump. That was an impressive bump. And then a twist of fate to him, and then a twist of fate to Ortiz. One, two, three. Okay, cool. Taz then apologizing to Darby for bringing up the whole thing about losing to Cody recently in the tournament. And then Darby's like, well, you know, it, stuff gets brought up about amateur wrestling. He's like, well, I was in amateur wrestling in Idaho and placed third in the state. I know what a tilt is. Taz should know what a tilt it is. It's what his neck can't do because Taz doesn't have a goddamn neck at all. I don't know where they're going with this. It's a bit weird, but whatever. So uh, we then get uh, Hikaru Shida promo, and Shida's English has improved dramatically. And if you are if you come to another country, like if wrestlers go to Japan, learn the, learn the language, that kind of stuff, this is great. And Shida, you can tell, wants to get better. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even like, okay, she absolutely needs to do it. She wanted to do this to get better, and it's going to help her in this company. It's going to help her in any indie company once those get back up. If she gets booked out to those, if either of the indie companies that I <laughs> frequent were to bring her in and have her face one of the local women there, I'm there and I got to shake her hand or maybe just bump her elbow, that kind of stuff. You know, the whole thing, maybe not shaking hands anymore. I want to see this kind of, I, I want to see more women improve and Sheeta has absolutely improved. This was pretty good. And then Nyla Rose says, hey, wait, I have a gift for you. Psh, hits her in the head with the cane. That was some funny stuff. Yeah, the timing was a little bit off, but it was still pretty funny. It was a funny payoff. So then MJF versus Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson gets in a few shots, and then guess what? Lee Johnson uh, tries to chop. Uh, he tries to chop MJF. MJF open hand slaps him and just beats the shit out of him. Power bombs him on the apron. Gets him back in there. Does a cross arm breaker and just gets that. That was some good stuff. Gets the arm break. That was really good stuff. I really enjoyed that. Then MJF cuts the promo saying he will face stunt next week, and then. Uh, just running down everybody. He's going to face Jungle Boy. And he's like, well, I need a warm-up match. I'm a little bit rusty. How about I face Stunt? Get Stunt out of the ring. Get him over the guardrail where in among the fans where he belongs. So then uh, for Pineapple Pete's little ticker thing, it says, has, got under, has gotten under Chris Jericho's skin. That was funny. Pineapple Pete versus Chris Jericho. Pete hits some moves, but gets hit with the juice effect. One, two, three. I don't mind this because you know what? It's a good way to do it, and you could always revisit this a number of months down the road. Because Jericho doing commentary again, maybe getting beat eventually by Pineapple Pete later in the year. Maybe even sometime next year. Who the fuck knows? But let's be honest, Jericho's career ain't going to be going on that much longer. Uh, his in-ring career, at least. Uh, then Jericho talks about the Elite and says, Well, I want to have the first ever stadium stampede match. Because Daly's place is in conjunction with the Jacksonville Jaguar Stadium. So they're going to have a match in the stadium. I hope it goes better than Street Fight. Because I know people like that, but anyway, I said what I said.
Uh, at least it'll be interesting. I mean, what, it's going to be five on five? It's going to be pretty goddamn weird. I guess Paige is coming back and the Bucks are coming back. So, okay, cool, whatever. I don't know what the hell they're going to do, but whatever. Vine, Vanguard 1, Vanguard 1. Vanguard 1 comes in with the shirt that he took from Chris Jericho. Release the hounds! And he, you know, accepts on behalf of the Elite that, you know, they're going to have the stadium stampede match. And then he has a bat. And they destroy Vanguard 1. And all I could think of was Scott Steiner hitting the duck with the pipe and all that. That's all I could think of. You know what? <clears throat> it was funny. It was funny to me. And then Matt Hardy trying to get all upset about, you know, losing his drone. No, Vanguard 1, no. I mean, was it a kid's drone? Is Could he not get the deposit back? What the hell's going on? Uh, I laughed at, though. Arn Anderson and Jake Roberts face-to-face -face next week. AA versus the man who was in AA a whole lot. That was mean. And Brody Lee, well, actually, I'll get to Brody Lee here in a second, because we have Mike Tyson presenting the TNT Championship of Double or Nothing. Punch out the Gimp Order, please. Moxley versus 10 of the Gimp Order next week. And then Sammy versus Matt next week. And also we get Ray Phoenix versus Orange Cassidy. So we get Daniels versus Brody Lee. That's all I got to say about that. Um, I love Christopher Daniels. I do. Got to meet him a couple times at indie shows last year. Brody Lee is talented. This gimmick is stupid. And this was not, this match was okay, but we all knew what was going to happen. Brody Lee has the AEW World Championship because he's the self-proclaimed champion. And basically what ended up happening is John Moxley uh, showed up eventually. Like After a bunch of run-ins and stuff like that with people from the crowd and, S and the rest of SU and the GIMP order, uh, Brody Lee hits the discus clothesline. And then here comes John Moxley, lays out the GIMP order, and then beats, uh, you know, beats up one of them and says, Brody Lee, you're going to pay for that with interest, and I'm going to make you regret coming to AEW. Your career is going to end here before it began. Okay, cool. Smash cut to credits. Uh, besides the Gimp Order and a couple things, you know what? This is actually a pretty damn solid episode of AEW Dynamite. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.